So the modern engine is quite complex. The computer's doing a lot of work just monitoring everything that goes on in the engine, but you're driving along and the check engine light flashes up on the dashboard. What does that mean? Should you keep driving the car with the check engine light on? What are some of the causes that will make that check engine light flash up on your dashboard? So this video, we're just gonna discuss some of the common issues and problems. There's so many factors that could come into play here. We're gonna cover everything with a systematic approach. There's actually 10 areas that we're gonna look at. And as you see, some of them branch off into very, very complex areas, but we'll certainly help you to get to the cause of your problem and work out how to diagnose this issue so you can drive the car safely without that check engine light coming on. <laughs> So what is the check engine light? Well, the check engine light is telling you there's a problem and you need to check your engine, hence its name, the check engine light. But that doesn't really give you a lot of information to go on. And the question is whether you should keep driving the car or not. I was driving along and it was a new car. I wasn't very familiar with the warnings on the dashboard. And this warning came up on the dashboard. It looked like an engine exploding with smoke coming out of it. When I pulled over and actually checked my handbook, it turned out to be the washer liquid reservoir and it was the jet of water so it was really just telling me that I was low on water so it really does help to just make yourself familiar with the various warning lights that come up on the dashboard when you first turn your key in the ignition it will test all of the warning lights and systems and you will get warning lights flashing up all over the dashboard just confirming that they're there so at that occasion just run your eye round and check that you understand what each of those warning lights mean because it's very distracting when you're driving along and you get a weird warning light coming up let's focus on that check engine light so the computer in the car has detected an issue with the running of the engine. So it would help to just understand the basic principles of the modern engine and how it works. So we talk about open loop systems and closed loop systems. So an open loop system was something that was typically used on much older engines. They tended to measure the amount of air and dump the correct amount of fuel for that into the engine. And there wasn't a great deal of trimming or adjustment that goes on. So sometimes the car was running rich, sometimes it was running lean but the car would still run quite effectively on that. So with modern fuel injection systems, you have a lot more control over fuel, the timing of the fuel, the amount of fuel that's injected with each burn of the engine. And also in turbocharged cars, to some degree, you can control the airflow going into the engine. So this brings us to a closed loop system. So it will use little sniffers in the exhaust stream, or some people refer to them as lambda sensors. So they will monitor the amount of oxygen in the exhaust and that will allow the engine to determine whether it's running too rich or too lean. Now in those conditions where it's running too rich there's too much fuel in relation to the air in the engine. If it was running too lean you would have too much air to the fuel that's going into the engine. So if it gets those readings and they're outside of the expected normal parameters, it will adjust or trim the amount of fuel or the amount of air if it's got control over that, that goes into the engine. We won't discuss the very complex setups with variable valve timing and computer controls within the engine. But the basic principle of a closed loop system is it's continually monitoring the engine. If it detects knock, it detects too much fuel or too much air it will generally adjust itself and keep everything running smoothly. So if that can't happen, that is when you start to get the check engine light warning come up. So if you're driving along and the check engine light has come up, in most cases, the ECU has already started to take protective measures against the engine. It may well have backed off the power. So you might refer to that as limp home mode where the power is substantially reduced. You should certainly keep your revs low and not make sudden full throttle inputs in the engine. So you've got a warning there, there is some problem in the engine. If that's accompanied by black smoke billowing out of the back of the car, strange noises from the engine or steam or smoke coming out of the front of the engine, you should really pull over and get that addressed quickly. The warning light there is telling you there's a problem and there's some physical signs that this problem is a major problem. So if you suspect there is a major problem going on in your engine, you really do need to pull over whenever it's safe to do so and take protective measures against the engine, open up the bonnet and start looking around and diagnosing where the fault is. 
with your engine, if you've got an engine warning light coming up, the first thing you should do is download the error codes from the onboard electronic diagnostic unit. The computer will typically store errors that have happened and it will give you a good indicator as to where the problem is in the car. So it might indicate a problem with the fuel system or it might indicate a problem with one of the sensors around the engine or in the engine. So that's a great place to start. So if you haven't got some kind of fault code reader, they really are worth the investment. Um, you can see me using the OBD11 here. I've not been sponsored. I've not been paid to say that. It's just a unit that I happen to use. It's quite effective. It, it uses your mobile phone as the display and the brains of the system. Every driver out there should really have some kind of fault code reader or engine scanner in their car just to help with diagnosing these problems because it can save a fortune taking your car into the garage. If you can go in and say there's a specific problem to look for, you've saved them a lot of time in the diagnostics process and also also, they're not going to rip you off by replacing random parts or at least we hope they're not going to rip you off replacing random parts. So the first area is generally an oxygen sensor. So the oxygen sensor is allowing the engine to detect how efficient and how clean the burn is. So if there's a problem with the sensor itself, the computer is getting wrong readings and it's not going to be able to supply enough fuel, enough air or it's detected that things are out of whack and we're having severe problems in the engine. So it will fire up that engine warning code. So in those instances the ECU will generally back off the power and it will revert to a fail-safe setting where you're restricted to low RPMs, low power delivery and it can generally manage that quite effectively and that will get you home, get you to a garage and see you safe. The fuel filler cap is also sometimes responsible in some models for throwing up an error code. So the filler cap seals the tank off so you've basically got your tank which is filled with fuel and the fuel pump is sucking the fuel out. So if if you've got a big vacuum forming in the fuel tank it can make it harder for the fuel pump to suck enough fuel out and also if the pressure is too great in the fuel tank that can also cause problems with the vapor protection systems that are built into the fuel tank so your car is designed not to pollute the environment if it detects the fuel filler cap is missing or non-operational it'll fire up an error code just to make sure that the car is still safe for others in the local area and you're not emitting those nasty fuel vapors into the environment. So the airflow sensor is really what tells the car how much air is coming into it. There's quite a few different systems. You've got the maps, the MAFs. Um, they all do a very, very similar job. They work in slightly different ways. If that sensor is not telling the ECU correctly how much air is going into the engine, it's not going to be able to make the correct fuel calculations and timing calculations. So you are going to hit problems, it's going to have issues. And these sensors can become soiled over time. They can even wear over time and become less effective. And often if you've modified the car and maybe you're pushing a lot more air into the engine, the standard factory specified sensors can no longer keep up with that. And it's always going to be over reading or under reading depending on the particular circumstances and the way the car is set up. So this isn't really a diesel thing, but spark plugs, spark ignition coils, anything associated with that part that generates the spark and initiates the burn in your typical gasoline petrol engine. If that's not working effectively, you're going to get an error code. Now, typically you will get a misfire on one of the cylinders. So it may be intermittent. It may just be struggling to fire. It could be down to a faulty plug, a faulty coil pack that's associated with a particular plug. Um, they can be quite tricky to diagnose sometimes, but often just swapping the coil packs over will give you an idea on where the problem moves. So you're reading it from your OBD2 diagnostic tool. And if that fault has moved and you've moved the coil pack, that can indicate that that coil pack you've moved is faulty so there's various methods of diagnosing where the problem is within the ignition system even if you've just got one specific cylinder to work from. So another common area is failed or damaged sensors. So the ECU is getting lots of readings from the engine from temperature to the position of the crank at any given time, the cam positions, the cam timing. There's so many different sensors in the engine and if one of those is starting to play up the ECU is going to struggle to work out what's going on 
and again it will revert to a limp home mode and try and protect the engine so you really don't want to be driving the car if those sensors are starting to play up because you can be damaging other components the typical thing that takes the hit is generally the catalyst if you're sending too much unburnt fuel into your catalyst you'll eventually need to replace that catalyst which can be quite expensive in the case of diesels with diesel particulate filters it may just be firing too much soot into the particulate filter to the point where it can't burn it off anymore so you might need to end up replacing that DPF as well which again can be quite expensive and within the engine if it's not running right if there's a lot of excessive vibrations that can have a knock-on effect and cause lots of other problems so really do check out the cause of these engine warning lights and if it's a sensor in the engine make sure that sensor is replaced and diagnosed and that you're not continuing to drive the car and certainly not driving it at high rpms and under heavy loads while you've got that warning light showing on your dashboard so other systems within the ignition system can cause problems so the distributor cap if your car has one of those if that's become cracked it can prevent the spark plugs from firing correctly even the ignition control module if your car has one if that's playing up that again will trigger an engine check light warning coming up on the dashboard so misfires are frustrating because they typically send unburnt fuel through the engine into the catalyst because it's not firing there's no spark it's not igniting that fuel charge so transmission issues can sometimes cause the engine check light to come on so if the transmission is starting to fail in some way it may be putting excessive load on the engine it may just be failing to shift and messing up the overall timing of the engine so you'll get a warning light come up so some cars have got specific warning lights for transmission problems but don't dismiss the transmission if you've got an automatic transmission and you've got an engine warning light it can sometimes be the cause of the problem in the engine or sometimes you have two problems exacerbating each other making each other much much worse so all engines need fuel they need fuel to be delivered and that's typically the job of the injectors so whether you've got port injection direct injection or indirect injection there is some kind of system squirting the fuel into the engine so if those injectors are clogged if the electrical system driving the injectors is faulty and the ECU is not able to deliver fuel in the correct ratios for each of the particular cylinders you will get the dashboard warning light coming up to check the engine so the engine control module the ECU the MEMS the electronic car computer there's so many different names I think every manufacturer of names the computer in the car something different and I'm sure they do it just to confuse everyone but basically that brain in the car if that's playing up you're going to get an error code coming up so maybe it's not getting sufficient voltage maybe it's shorting out somewhere maybe some of the sensors have started to create a short and the ECU is no longer functioning as it should so that would rightly so fire up an error code because that's controlling all of the components within the engine so there are also a few mechanical things that can go on in the engine that will just upset so all your sensors can be working perfectly fine the camshaft is driven by a belt from the crank at the bottom of the engine and if that tensioner is incorrect the cams may be rotating at different rates at random rates it may be misaligned and that can cause all sorts of problems with the running of the engine so hopefully that's just a case of replacing the belt or the timing chain or replacing the tensioner but they're things that you will typically notice as a rattle that's going on within the engine and you should certainly jump on those quickly because they tend to get worse and worse and if that belt fails altogether you will have serious problems so if your engine check light has come on don't ignore it if there's no obvious signs of a serious problem with the engine you are probably safe to continue driving but restrict your speed restrict the load on the engine and pull over whenever it's safe to do so and do that essential visual check within the engine bay if you've got your code reader with you pull off the error codes and just see what's going on and that will give you an indication as to how serious the problem is but certainly get these problems addressed at your local garage or mechanic or do it yourself as soon as possible because in most cases these problems will just grow and get bigger and bigger and more serious and they have knock-on effects and damage other components within your engine so please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there i hope this video has been useful to you let me know in the comments what your experiences have been with the engine check light coming up maybe i've missed a few points so please enlighten me help me to give a much more rounded out view of this topic for all of our viewers and if you haven't subscribed please do so because we would love you to stay tuned and please check out this video